Hi, everybody. All right, so today I am going to show you, or I'm going to talk about uh, skincare and specifically sunscreens. And this is um, about sunscreens, especially for women that are premenopause over 50. Okay, because that's me. I'm premenopause. I am over 50 years old. And what's been working for me? So to give you some background, I have always had extremely oily skin all my life. Um, now that I am in my 50s, I have noticed um, it's not as excessively oily as it was, obviously, when I was younger. But in the winter, I start to get actually um, a little dry, right? And so um, I have now realized in the last, I would say, five years that I should have been wearing sunscreen um, on a daily basis, um, you know, because it got really bad when I, my last, was it my last trip? My last trip to the Philippines, which was in 2017, um, we went island hopping and for some stupid reason, I did not put sunscreen on my face. I put it all over my body sprayed it all over my body, but just did not apply it to my face. And so when I came back from the Philippines, um, I don't know, maybe, I don't know how much time it was before I noticed, but I developed these brown spots on my cheekbones, right? There weren't really a lot, but they were just, they were really noticeable. I was just like, so when did I get that? And I didn't really know how I got them. Okay. And, um, started getting a little bit more and then realized when I was talking with my sister, because we both kind of like developed them, I guess you could say like around the same time, she wasn't with me on the trip, but she also was not wearing sunscreen on her face. And so we just were talking about this. And that's when we realized it was like, you know, melan, um, me what is it called again? Mela, melamona, something like that. Mela, <laughs> I can't pronounce it, but, um, yeah, we realized that they were brown spots and, um, that we should start wearing sunscreen. We should have been actually the whole time. So I started buying moisturizer with sunscreen and I was specifically using uh, Cetaphil for oily skin because it, you know, you notice there's a lot of moisturizers out there, especially here in the US that is geared more towards women with dry skin than with um, oily skin. Well, specifically if you're doing drugstore, because I wasn't about to spend a lot of money, you know, on um, skincare or yeah, specifically for my face. So that was the one that I was using for the longest time because it had SPF 30. And you know, I thought that was fine, but I was still had that problem with oily skin. Um, and in the last, I would say two years, I've been making more of an effort to, um, you know, take better care of my, um, of my skin. And so I started, um, you know, uh, noticing a lot about Korean skincare. Now I've been aware of Korean skincare. In fact, um, I think it was on my first trip back to the Philippines. Um, that was in 2008. Um, Korean skincare was like becoming a big thing among the Asian community. And, um, you didn't really hear about it a lot at all on YouTube. So, um, but I was aware of it because I would see on the chat boards and stuff. And then I had friends from around the world who are Asian that were talking about it. And so one of the first, uh, brands that I had heard of was actually Innisfree and Nisha. And, um, that was around the time that BB cream became really, really popular in Asia. And unfortunately, it, you could not get it here in the U.S. And when I was able to get samples of it, because I had a friend in Canada who had purchased it when she went to Hong Kong, um, the samples that she sent me, um, it just didn't work because um, I just remember that BB cream back then would like if you were not like that particular Asian shade of pale or well, basically Korean, um, you know, skin tones it would show up like almost gray on your skin. So it would never work for me because I am like 
like a Mac NC40, right? And so I have like, you know, like the yellow, but red undertone, more yellow undertone, you could say. And it just, yeah, BB cream never worked for me. So, um, so that's how I became aware of like Korean skincare. And um, yeah, so like I didn't start purchasing uh, sunscreen, like just Korean sunscreen until I would say two years ago. Okay. So, um, I actually came across it when I was shopping at the Amazon returns bin stores. And the first one that I actually found was the, in this, uh, I'm sorry, the Misha. And this is like daily, um, sunscreen and it's an SPF, um, plus PA plus, plus, plus SPF. I'm sorry, 50 PA plus, plus, plus. And, um, I was like excited to find this, you know, because one, it said it was a daily sunscreen. And two, I knew the brand, Misha. So um, I was eager to try it. And then after I found that, I would say probably within a couple of weeks, I found the Biore UV one. And this is a Japanese brand. Um, I actually have several packs of this because when I picked it up, it came in a three pack. So fortunately, I have um, tons of it and it has not expired yet. So um, this is actually the first one that I use, and it's actually almost out, but we'll, we'll get to that. So anyways, um, and then I started finding more at the bin store, okay? So these are a mixture of what I found at the bin store and then what I either purchased from TJ Maxx Marshalls or I ordered on um, Amazon, okay? So let's, let's talk about... Um, you know, sunscreen, but specifically Korean sunscreen. Okay. So there is a big difference between Korean sunscreen and, um, sunscreen made here in the West. And when I say the West, I'm talking about U S Canada, Europe. Okay. And the reason why Korean sunscreen or Korean skincare in particular is much better. Okay. So I printed out something that I had read online that was, that explains it really well. So I'm going to go ahead and just read it off here. So what does SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 mean? Okay. So basically, okay. So SPF or sun protection factor. I didn't even know that's what it meant. It's like a dependable friend that we all need when we're having a beach or when we're having a beach day, the higher the number, the longer you bask in the sun's glow without burn. Okay. So SPF 50, for instance, in, um, in any of these means that you get a solid 50 times the protection compared to if you went out in the, um, out in the sun without anything on. Okay. Now the PA sunscreen rating, which is short for uh, protection grade of the UVA is a crucial factor to understand while SPF primarily measures UVB protection, the PA rating solely focuses on UVA protection. Now, both types of rays are detrimental to our skin in different ways. UVB rays lead to redness and sunburn, while UVA rays cause significant damage to our skin's genes. So surprisingly, it wasn't until the 1990s that the true extent of UVA's harmful effects became widely recognized. There are primary culprits behind signs of aging and skin cancer, and they also account for the majority of the sun's energy. Okay. Now, broad spectrum skin care, I'm sorry, skin sunscreen provides comprehensive protection against UVA and UVB rays. While SPF measures UVB rays, which can cause premature aging and melanoma, this PA++++ sunscreen offers 16 times more protection than wearing no sunscreen and focuses on UVA rays, okay? Um, it's crucial to choose uh, skincare products that shield you from both types of radiation. So you need to look at the broad spectrum label on sunscreens and cosmetics in the U.S. as it indicates protection from both forms of damaging radiation. PA plus ratings measure a product's ability to block UVA rays and can be found on various sunscreens, healthy makeup, skincare products. Since this product was not made in the U.S., 
it doesn't use the broad spectrum language, but nonetheless, it protects both against both UVA and UVB rays. Okay. Now here's the big thing. In Korea, sunscreens are regulated as functional cosmetics versus in the U.S., they're regulated as over-the-counter drugs. The Korean Ministry of Food and Drug Safety is a regulatory authority similar to the FDA here. They're responsible for creating and overseeing sunscreen, um, the sunscreen approval process. The approval process includes submitting clinical and clinical safety and efficiency documentation to the MFDS, which is far simpler than what the U.S. requires. The testing and documentation is similar to what's required in other global regions, but the process is much more efficient and can be done quickly. Okay. Now, in contrast, because the FDA treats sunscreen like a drug and not a cosmetic, they have some of the most stringent requirements in the world, which requires extensive testing. So as a result, the FDA in the U.S. has not greenlit any new UV filters since 1999. Notably, the FDA has recently mandated supplementary safety data for all previously approved chemical UV filters to uphold and um, uphold their market presence in the U.S., Okay. So this is kind of why a lot of people really go for like Korean skincare. Okay. Because one, um, as it says on here, it's not treated as a drug. It's treated as cosmetics. And two, they do even more testing. Like they actually provide proof versus like here in the U S the FDA, they haven't updated anything since 1999. So we're working with like we're working with stuff with skin sunscreen in particular that hasn't been updated since 1999. Okay. So let me get back to reading here. So according to the FDA, sunscreen manufacturers are making drug claims, for example, preventing sunburn, decreasing risk of skin cancer, which is why they're regulated as such. Are the extent of testing and requirements holding U S brands back? It's a very long process to get these rules and regulations uploaded. Meanwhile, the U.S. brands are unable to make any advances um, in chemical-based sunscreens, okay? Um, so their formulas are just, yeah, they're old compared to, like, Korean, Korean sunscreens, okay? Now, you're probably wondering, and, you know, I didn't really know that there was really a difference between chemical sunscreens and mineral sunscreens, okay? So, um, I had to kind of look that up as well. And everything that I have here is all chemical sunscreens. Okay. Um, let me see. Where was the part that I had about the mineral? So with mineral, I know the difference. Okay. So the difference between mineral and chemical to me, the way I look at it is that mineral, mineral sunscreens, they contain the zinc oxide and that's what creates the white cast. This is the reason why uh, mineral sunscreens are much more thicker, you know, um, a little bit more pastier, okay, versus with the chemical ones, they are much more lighter, um, more lotion, a little bit lighter in lotion, almost sometimes a, like a gel in a way, and there's no white cast, okay? So that's, that's how I look at... Um, at the two. So here I found it. Different types of UV filters. Mineral contains zinc oxide and titanium di dioxide. Whereas in the chemical, it's, I'm not even going to read some of these because there's, <laughs> there's a lot of them. And I like oxybenzone, avon benzone. I mean, they're just like, yeah, there's a lot. I can't even read some of those um, names, but that's, that's basically the difference. Now, um, as far as like, which is better for you, mineral or, you know, chemical, I mean, that's, you can look at, you can figure that out yourself. I prefer the chemical ones. They work best for my skin type. Um, I don't know. I just feel like the mineral ones kind of clog my skin, especially on my face. Um, cause you know, with oily skin, you're producing a lot of excess oil because your skin is not hydrated enough. So that's kind of one of the reasons why. But anyways, um, 
let me go through some of these sunscreens that I've um, that I've got here and which ones I like and which ones I don't like and why. OK, so I'm going to put them in the order that I actually started trying them. So let's see. These are different and I'll explain why. Yeah, like that. These four are about the same time. OK, I'll do it like this. So there's four. All right. So as I said before, the first ones that I the first one I got was this Misha one. OK, and this is um, all of these are all SPF 50 plus plus PA plus 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 plus. OK, well, with the exception of the Innisfree. OK, that one is an SPF 36. So with the Misha, when I tried this, I thought, oh, this is great and stuff. Well, it was obviously the first one that I tried and I didn't know any better now that I've tried. I have eight here. I can definitely tell you this is one of my least favorites. Okay. So this one is a thicker cream, as you can see. All right. Um, you would think, oh gosh, it probably has a white cast. And yes, actually it does. I have not looked it up to see what is in it, but I feel like this, um, this does have like a white cast. It'll take a, a little, just a little bit to absorb into my skin. But um, I don't know. I just didn't like the way that this felt on my skin. This probably would work better with somebody with dry skin, but this just did not, it didn't sit well on my skin. You know, even I mean, here I can see it absorbing, but it really does look like it's got the white cast. So uh, let me get some wipes here to wipe that off. Um, yeah, I just didn't feel like it was, my skin didn't feel, um, supple. I guess that's the word that I want to use with this particular sunscreen. I mean, I still have it. I would rather use that probably in the winter than I would in the summer. Um, and I do have some here that actually I only wear it in the winter as opposed to in the summer. They just seem to work better. Um. So it's kind of good that I waited this long to make the video because a lot of these I started using them in the, in the winter and then now it's summer and I've used it and I can say it's like, yeah, um, which one works better now? Some of them I've just purchased, so I can't really say if it works in the winter. All right. So this is the second one that I got, which is the Biore and the Biore. I absolutely love this. Um, I can use this both, um, you know, summer and winter. It's probably the lightest, almost like gel-like, kind of watery a little bit out of all of these. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm a, oh, see how it just kind of like just spurted out like that. <laughs> oh, great. That's way too much. Oh, no. I hate wasting um, this because it's one of my favorites. I'm going to have to put this in a container. So, because I'm going to use it later on. Um, but it absorbs so fast. I love this. And you can see there's no white cast at all. Okay. This one I used in the, well, this one I used in the winter and man, my skin felt so soft and supple and like, I was not oily, um, at all with this, even after it would take like maybe about three or four hours before I become, you know, oily, but not like excessively oily, but I really love this. And when I should say that the Misha one has like a fragrance to it, which is a little bit stronger. Um, this one has like, it's a very clean, but very, very light fragrance. So, um, yeah, I mean, this one, I absolutely adore this, um, sunscreen. And when I do eventually run out of all the other tubes, I'm going to repurchase it again, you know, because it's, it's, a, it's the only Japanese one that I have but it just works so well, surprisingly. I, I actually won't, don't mind trying, you know, wouldn't mind trying out some other Japanese ones. I guess I'm going to have to waste this. I can't find a container. Um, because, um, Japanese, you know, skincare is actually pretty good. Um, you know, um, in terms of like, for hydration, but the Koreans, they put a lot of effort into their skincare research. I mean, you think about it, you know, when it comes to Asians, for one, they, um, 
I will say they don't want to get dark. I myself, I don't mind getting dark as an Asian. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm, I grew up here, so I don't have that mindset of them in the Asia where, um, being white <laughs> is better. <laughs> so I accept my skin tone, my skin color, but, um, yeah, that I just, you know, I trust Asian skincare more than I do Western skincare because it's really geared toward my skin. But, um, you know, people here in the West, they can still use this skincare. Okay. So the third one that I used is this Innisfree here. Okay. And, um, this one I actually ordered on Amazon prime two years ago, Amazon prime day, because I was curious, um, what I didn't realize that it was SPF 36. Actually, I didn't realize it for quite a while, but, um, it is more lotiony. It's not as thick and pasty as the Misha. Um, it doesn't have, um, the white cast from what I can remember, although it looks like it would, but you can see as I'm applying it, it's, it's not as, it's just not as thick. It is, a, it, it does absorb into the skin better. Now I use this in the winter and I didn't really like it, um, as much as I thought I would. Um, plus let's see. So this is 50 ml. Yeah. It doesn't, there's not as much in the tube as like some of these other ones. Well, no, this one's 50 ml. I don't know. I just felt like I went through this faster, but I used it less. Does it make sense? Um, actually, this probably would work better for me in the summer. I just haven't used it yet because I have all these other ones. Um, but yeah, I just, it didn't do well on my skin in the winter. So, um, I will, I'll probably try to use this. Maybe I'll try it. I'm using that today and see how it holds up, especially when I work out. Um, that's another test that I do because, you know, you sweat, it's going to sweat off. Right. So I'll try this later on and see how it works, but it's all right. You know, like I said, Misha and Innisfree, they've been around for such a long time. So they're kind of tried and true. They're, you know, they're, they're well known. Um, this one right here is called thank you farmer. And I found this at the bin store. I got this probably for $4. Now I'd never heard of the brand. Um, it's funny cause you know, whenever I see Korean skincare, at the bin store. I just buy it. I'll look it up first, obviously on Amazon, see what the reviews are and stuff, but I'll buy it. Okay. This one, I had um, no idea what it was. Now, um, this did come in a box, but I've already tossed it since then. So I got this during the winter and I got this last year, um, probably around, actually, I didn't get it in the winter. I got it around the summer, but I didn't start using it until probably around September or so. And oh my God, I love this one. I really love this one. This worked so well in the winter. Um, it, my skin was just like, it was so nice. So I was like <laughs> sparingly using it wherever, when I do apply it. Um, cause I wasn't sure what well, was like, where am I going to, you know, first I went on Amazon to look and I'm like, crap, that's kind of pricey. It's like $22 or something like that. Maybe more for that little tube. And then I found out that Costco online sells it two pack for like $35. So that's a lot cheaper. So I meant to, I kept putting it off. I meant to buy more and I just kept putting it off. But fortunately I found all this other stuff. So I'll eventually buy another, you know, I'll buy a two pack of it. But um, yeah, this one is, it's pretty moisturizing. It's lighter um, than the Innisfree, but there is absolutely no white cast at all as you can see, as it absorbs. Um, and the fragrance is like, it's a clean, almost like a baby fresh, you know, type of fragrance, but you can barely smell it. You'd only smell it on your fingertips, but I really, really like this one. Um, yeah, it worked so well in the winter and I've used it, I think maybe once or twice this summer and it works fine, you know, but I kind of want to like save that. So yeah, we have that. Okay. Now the next one that I found, I found it for a dollar and that was at the bin store. And, um, at first I was a little confused because the names are very familiar, um, very similar. This one is, um, Innisfree and this one is Innis 
or rather is isn't tree i think it's hard to read um but yeah it's a completely different brand it's one of the more newer brands like this um i'm not sure how old some of these brands are the thing the, the thing with korean um skincare is that there's so many brands that come out there's so many brands that you know i guess go out of business there's a lot of them that come out like so brand new um and um it's kind of hard to know if they've got anything good and i think a lot of people tend to go on the um korean skincare or yeah beauty websites to look to see what's the newest and latest, the what's what's basically trending in Korea. And then if that's trending, then that's probably the best right at, at the moment to like try out, you know, to buy. And so um, I didn't really know about that looking on um, some of those websites until just recently. But um, yeah, so I'd never heard of this one. I looked it up on Amazon and it had a lot of good reviews. So I thought, okay, it's only a dollar. I mean, I can toss it if it didn't work out. So it's it's just, it's kind of like the um, Thank You Farmer one. And it is, um, it's light, as you can see. It's more almost like a gel, like this one, the Biore UV. It does not have a white cast at all, okay? As you can see there, when um, it's starting to absorb into my skin. Um, but... I don't know. This just, I didn't feel like, how do I say? I didn't like how my skin felt with this. I think this will work better in the winter than in the summer. My skin just did not feel um, moisturized, I guess, um, with this. So that's kind of why I have not been using it. A lot of people swear by this one, okay? Because it's got the hyaluronic acid. And that's really, really important, especially if you are, um, you know, over 50 because um, fine lines start popping up, you know, start coming up, um, wrinkles and stuff. And so the hyaluronic acid is going to help keep you a lot more moisturized. And I can feel that, but I don't know. I just, it was, I felt like my skin just, uh, it's not going to work for me in the summer. <laughs> so I am going to hold off on using this until this coming winter. And I only purchased this probably sometime, I think around the spring. Yeah. So the next one that I have here is the Course um, or RX or Coast RX. I don't know how to pronounce it, but this one I heard a lot of, um, a lot of talk about. And they're famous for the snail mucin uh, serum. Uh, I have it. I'd have to go and get it. But that's their number one product that everybody knows and swears by. And it, yeah, I will tell you right now that that snail mucin serum is amazing. Okay. Especially if you're older, you need that because and especially use it at night because you will wake up in the morning with like baby soft skin completely hydrated, glowing. Okay. So I figured, you know, they probably have some good sunscreen. So I ordered this from Amazon. Um, I think I ordered this back in March, maybe February or March, but I didn't really start using it until, um, the summer and kind of strange because I thought that this would work well for the summer, but actually, um, I think this will be a better one in the winter for me. It's weird because I, I, I don't see, I don't feel, um, I don't feel like it's moisturizing enough for my skin. Um, yeah, it's just strange. It doesn't feel like this one or this one at all. Um, yeah, I think this one will work best for winter and let's put some on so you can see this was also kind of pricey too. I mean, it's, this brand is kind of pricey on Amazon. I think it's, I got, this one is probably the most expensive. It was like $25. Um, and I don't know why all of a sudden everybody's wanting to text me. <laughs> Sorry. So it's a little bit thicker. So you can see why I probably want to wear it for the winter. Now this one does not have a white cast. It's thicker in terms
All right, sorry about that. My um, memory card was full, so I had to delete some stuff. Okay, so I was talking about the um, Cos RX. Okay, so yeah, this one is a even now after it's kind of dried up. So I don't know where this video had cut off. Okay, so basically when I applied it, um, I will say that this one I think will be better for it's better suited for me in the winter because it is a little bit um, stickier. It's um, I can feel like it's created like a kind of like a barrier against well what would be in dry you know air in the winter. So this one um, would work. Yeah, it would just work better for me in the winter. Um, I didn't like how it felt on my skin in the summertime. So and. Um, like I said, that one was about $25, I think, on Amazon. Um, Amazon Prime Days are coming up July 16th and 17th, and um, that'll probably be on sale. I'm going to put a list of all of these um, uh, sunscreens in the description below with links to Amazon, okay? Um, so that way, you know, if you want to try it out, that's probably a good time to purchase them, you know. Um, since they'll probably, hopefully they'll all be on sale. Okay. So these two are the most recent ones that I've gotten and probably the ones that I've been using the most. I alternate between them. It depends on, you know, okay. If I feel like using this one, I'll use it. If I feel like using this one, I'll use it. Um, but I pretty much do alternate. So this one I purchased from, um, TJ Maxx, $12.99 was the price. And I thought that was a pretty good deal. Um, it's by this company called, um, some by, I guess me or my, um, this one is a V10. It's got hyaluronic acid. Actually, no, no, no. I take that back. It has, this is another important thing to look for in skincare. If you're over 50, um, it's got the niacin, see, I can't pronounce these niacin, um, cyanamide. There we go. And, um, when I saw this, I thought hyaluronic acid, it probably does, but I love this. Now, um, this one in particular on my skin, oh my gosh, it makes it feel, I feel like I've got the squint, I've got the skin of my 20 year old self again. It's just the way that it feels. Um, so it's a little bit more matted probably because of, um, of this you know, the Nio, Nio, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's why I look for a lot of products that have it because that is what, you know, match your skin out, especially if you have oily skin and, um, yeah, it is a little bit sticky, not as sticky as the, the cost RX, but man, I just love the way my skin feels on, with this in the summertime. It's, um, it's moisturizing and, but it keeps the oil in my skin at bay, probably because it's, um, it's so moisturizing. So, um, I used that one. In fact, I used that one yesterday and I was, um, for 4th of July, I was at my brother's house, um, the whole family and we were in the pool. I was in the pool for like six hours, you know? And this is the one that I had applied on my face and I always put a secondary sunscreen and I'll get to that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it kept my skin really moisturized throughout the whole day. All right. And then the last one here, this is one of the more popular brands right now with screen, with a Korean skincare. Um, it's called round lab. And I was lucky enough to find this at the bin store for a dollar. And it was funny because when I saw this, I recognized this label right here or this right here, because I just read about it, like literally the day before I found this. And I was just shocked that I was able to find this for a dollar. So, um, this one doesn't expire until late next year. So I've got plenty of time to try it out. Um, now this one is, I love the way it feels on my skin and the difference with this one and this, this one has, okay, let me get up close so you can see it. It has birch juice moisture, um, birch juice, basically. Um, I think this is the only product I've seen so far that has that. And I wasn't entirely sure how my skin would react to it. Now, I don't have sensitive skin. Um, 
I have yet to try a product that has broken my skin out. Okay. So, um, I'm probably, I would probably be a good person to test stuff out on, but, um, I've seen a lot of reviews where people broke out with this and it turns out they have sensitive skin. So it's just, they're just not, yeah, they got to stick to, to like, I guess some of the other stuff that doesn't have like these specialized things like the birch juice. So, um, this one right here, it really mats my skin as well. Um, I would say this probably mats it more, but keeps a slight dewy finish. This one, it's a completely, I'm trying to dry this off here. It's a completely different texture um, on my skin. It's much more lighter than this, almost gel-like, like the Biore UV, but you can see there's like, there's like no white cast. Like a, this one has no white cast as well. And you, I mean, like I told you, the only thing I think that had white cast was the Misha. Everything else, no white cast. But it's, um, yeah, it just feels much lighter than the, um, this V10 here. But I don't know, I like the way it feels. And so these are probably going to be the, the two that I'll be using primarily for the rest of the summer um, until the fall comes around. But I just, I like it. And I forgot to tell you, this one does have a slight um, scent, a little bit, a little perfumey, but I don't notice it when I put it on my skin. This one is a more of a fresh scent. Um, I don't know if I had mentioned the scent on this one. It's, um, I don't think it, I think it does have a scent. Yeah. It's kind of hard to describe. Um, but there is a slight scent to it. And I don't know if I, s I mentioned about this one as well, if there is a scent. Because I know there's some people that are very particular. They're like, we need to know if there's a scent or not. This one almost like no scent at all. So, okay. So those are all of the lotion <laughs> sunscreens. Now, you're probably wondering what these are. Now, these are called sunsticks, okay? And sunsticks are important as well. You need to have a sunstick, okay? Doesn't matter what time of the year, you need to be using it. Um, so a sunstick is basically like a bar. It's almost like a deodorant bar like this, okay? Uh, this is what you're gonna reapply on your face throughout the day, okay? Because obviously if you guys wear foundation, which I don't, but if you wear foundation, you're not going to be reapplying this on your face. Even me who don't wear, who doesn't wear foundation. I don't even re reapply this on my face. This is just in the morning and that's it. But this is what I would take with me to reapply. Um, so they're basically like bars or sticks and, um, they offer just as much protection as these do, but I primarily use these on my T zone. Okay. So, um, forehead, nose, and cheeks. And I do two swipes, um, just to be on the safe side. Okay. So let's go through some of the brands here. So obviously first one's here, Abib. This is like one of the, um, popular, pro uh, popular brands right now among the Korean skincare fanatics out there. Um, the first one that I found was this Abib Tone Up Sunstick. I wasn't sure exactly what it was when I saw it, but I went ahead and purchased it anyways because it was only a dollar. And I got this one, I think, over the, the winter, but I never used it up until probably the spring. You know, by then I was just like, all right, let me try this. So ugh, I don't even think they make this anymore because I have not seen it on the websites. It's like, I have to kind of like dig on some of the Korean websites, um, beauty websites to find this particular one. Yeah. Now a lot of people were saying that they were getting a white cast with this, but I did not see that. And I think it's because it's, um, it is white. So, um, I like the fact that it is curved because then when you're applying it on your face, you know, it's, it takes up a lot of, um, it's a lot wider too. 
So you're really getting your cheeks, you know? The only thing I don't like is like when I'm applying it on my nose, <laughs> then I kind of have to angle it a bit, but applying it on your cheeks and your forehead is a lot easier. And so it's a, you know, it's just like, like I said, like a deodorant, it's dry, okay? But you can see as I'm, apl I'm applying it here and it almost looks like there is a white cast, right? But you kind of have to wait for it to absorb into your skin is what people have said. You kind of blend it in and um, let it absorb. And so it, the great thing about this is that it's a powder finish. So if you've got oily skin, then um, you're not going to be, yeah, it's going to mattify you, which is, it's a great, you know, that's, it's great. I love it. Um, I have not used it as much as I have with the other ones. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, mostly because when I tried it the first, I was kind of like, that oh, is a white cast. But as you look, you know, now that it's kind of absorbed and I've kind of rubbed it in, there's no white cast. I don't know. I just, I just haven't used it as much. Um, I have used this one more. Okay. This one I purchased from Amazon. It was $22. My sister purchased this actually, um, on one of the Amazon prime days and she got it. She says she got it for 12 bucks. I'm not sure. I heard, and I actually saw on Reddit in the Asian beauty, um, was it either Asian beauty or Korean beauty? Um, people were finding this one over at TJ Maxx and Marshall's and were able to get it for like $12.99 or something like that. I've seen this brand over at TJ Maxx and Marshall's, but I have not um, been able to find the, um, the sun stick. If I do see it, I'm snapping it up because this one I love. Now, this one is a little bit different. It does have a powder finish, but it's, as you saw with this one, it's not white. It's, I think this one is a little bit more, um, more, just a little bit more moisturizing, but it is a powder finish. It's not as thick as this one right here, but I just absolutely adore this. Um, and like I said, I do two swipes of it on my T-zone and I'm good to go. And, um, if I, like when we went actually yesterday, I brought this one and this one with me when we went swimming and I put this one on my face. Um, when we left, I'm going to tell you what my whole like skincare process is. So you'll understand why I'm, um, I brought both of these, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I put this one on and then I later on when probably after, like maybe two or three hours later, I put this one on, but yeah, I didn't have any problems, um, you know, as far as like, I mean, I didn't feel like it was coming off, especially with this one, but just to be on the safe side, you know, always reapply. So yeah. And then this one right here, I actually purchased this last month. Like this is probably the most recent one. So this one is, um, from the same brand as thank you farmer. And, um, I'm going to toss these boxes. I was just saving it for this video. It's a lot smaller, as you can see. So this fits really uh, perfectly in your purse. Actually, this is the one that I take when I go to the gym. Um, if you're wondering why there's like this black stuff, that's probably from my brow powder uh, when I'm applying it above my, um, on my forehead. I try to always wipe off the excess powder, but sometimes there's probably just a little bit that I haven't gotten. So, but it doesn't get on my face. I mean, on my cheeks or anything like that, but this one right here is very mattifying as well. It's a very, it's a powder finish. It's very light. I feel like it's even lighter than this. So I sometimes feel like I have to apply it three times just to feel, but to feel like maybe it's on my skin, but it is really, really like powdery finish. Like, I mean, it's so mattifying, you know, it's so light and that's why I love it. So I'm, this is definitely going to be a repurchase. Um, when I run out, but I just like the, the size of it. It's just so, so compact. Um, so this one right here, and I'm uh, kind of glad that, um, well, I mean, I'm not happy that I purchased it in terms of like, so what happened was, is that there is this other brand called skin one Oh one zero zero four, which is very, very popular as well. 
all of their, um, the whole line is really popular and I heard really good. I have yet to get any of the stuff. Um, so I wanted to purchase the, um, the sun stick. And so when I went online looking for it on Amazon, for some reason I didn't come across it. Um, it's weird because you know, you have to search certain ways on Amazon to find the stuff. When you put in sun stick, sun space stick, you'll get, it'll show you some stuff, but if you put it in a sun stick, no space, it'll show you other stuff that you didn't see in the other search. Right. And even then when I searched that way, I still didn't find it, but I had come across this and that's the thing. There's a lot of counterfeits, a lot of fake Korean beauty, some, um, you know, skincare on Amazon. And if you don't look carefully enough, you're going to fall for it. And I fell for it because the labeling on here is exactly the same as skin one zero zero four. Okay. The only difference is, and I didn't pay attention was that it does not specifically say the brand on here. Okay. So I got this like so cheap. It came from China. I didn't realize it was shipping from China. Um, it was prime, but it was going to take like fucking, it said almost like two weeks. And, um, I originally purchased this because I was going to give one to one of my friends who was going to the Philippines. And then I was going to keep the other one, you know, cause I mean, I got it for like two for 1299, which is like, that's really cheap. And it took forever by the time that I actually got, this was on, was like literally a week before my friend was leaving for the Philippines. And at that point I just decided to order um, that, you know, my friend, something else, um, a different brand a legit brand. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I, I ordered that and sent that off, but, um, this came in and I was just like, that's kind of weird that, you know, I was looking at the label and then I noticed because it didn't show it on the, um, Amazon page. This said S O G E SOG, I guess. And I was like, I thought I purchased skin one zero zero four. No. And then I kind of like delved deep on Reddit and found out that I got a, um, a fake one, but it still works. Um, the thing about this is that it's, maybe I should use this one. It's, uh, I feel like this works really well for like the, the water because it's, it's got this, like, I don't know what you want to, how do you call it? Kind of like very, like almost like a Vaseline, um, texture to it when it's applied. And, um, yeah, I just felt like this would not, um, you know, wash off my face as fast as like some of the other ones. So that's why when I, um, did my whole skincare routine and then I applied this, you know, left the house and then got in the water right before, actually right before I got in the water, I reapplied this. Cause it was like an hour and a half after I had applied this, I applied this. And, um, and then I applied it again after like another two hours and I, you know, I think I was fine after that, but yeah, it's, it's like really thick. Like, like I said, almost like a Vaseline, but not, uh, it's just not as, um, it's not as, you know, soft powdery as, um, as these are. So it's all right. I mean, it's, it's really, really small compared to this. But, you know, it's, I, I'm just going to use it only for swimming for now. I mean, I'm also wearing a hat, so I feel like I'm okay. Even if it's like, doesn't claim, you know, doesn't live up to the claims of SPF 50 PA plus, 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 plus. So this, this last one here was actually the very first sun stick that I purchased. And I got this two years ago and, um, I haven't really used it. I don't know what this is, why there's an indention there. And that, like I said, that black stuff is probably from my brow powder, but it's, yeah, it's kind of weird. It's, um, this is actually more, um, more of what I envisioned what a sun stick would be when I first got it. It's kind of like this consistency a little bit, a little petroleum, a little just a little, but it's still mattifying. Um, a lot of these don't really have a scent. And if they do, it's this very, 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 very light floral scent. Um, this one in particular, I like that. It's so compact. This can fit in the purse, you know, 
Um, but, and it, it worked out fine, you know, but once I got the other ones, I was just like sold on them. So I haven't used this as much, but it's good. It's a good backup to have. Um, I've never heard of this brand either. Um, in fact, they don't even sell this on Amazon anymore because I looked it up. So I don't know if this Korean brand's even around anymore. Dashu. But um, yeah. So those are all of the sun sticks. Now, how I apply daily sunscreen. So I have this, like, I think of it as like a complicated skincare process. So um, I basically wash my face, you know, and I'm not even going to go into the cleansers that I use because that's a whole nother um, video. And then, you know, pat my face dry. And then and this is important because it's just one product that I use. Um, I apply this toner. Actually, no, no, take that back. I apply a regular toner um, on my face and I've got like a couple that I'm rotating around between. Um, one of them is like a calming toner because I've had this breakout on my chin, which has been annoying. It's been going on for more than a month. It's like as soon as one pimple goes away, another one pops up. So I've been using this calming toner. It's a Korean brand. And I think it's helping because it makes the, um, the current pimple go away pretty fast. I think what's going on is that I have like, it's probably hormonal. Um, so that's probably why. And the fact that it keeps popping up on my chin. So I apply that toner and then, um, as it's drying, I apply this, um, spray. It's a toner as well, but, um, it's got hyaluronic acid with aloe vera and I use this year round. Now, I purchased this stuff from um, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Ross. Um, I think those are the three that you can find it at. Yeah. And these are usually like $4.99. When I see it, I buy all of them. I probably have like, I don't know, six bottles of this. But it takes me a while to go through a bottle because, you know, you're just spraying it. But this stuff is a game changer for me. I didn't start using this until about maybe two or three years ago. And I noticed a big improvement in my skin. Um, it was less oily and, um, it just looked better, you know? So I always apply this, I'll just spritz it. And then, um, I mean, I could wait for my skin to, you know, to, to for it to absorb and dry, but sometimes I've got one of the, I use like a, a fan, uh, like one of these to, you know, kind of help it dry on my skin a little bit faster especially when I'm working, it's like, I don't have the time to sit there and let, wait for it to dry. It's like watching glue. So I'll let that dry. And then I will apply my, um, moisturizer. And the one that's been working a lot has been this one right here, which fortunately I purchased like three or four of these for a dollar at the bin store. And I had no idea what it was when I found them. I just thought, uh, it's only a dollar. I'll try it out. I looked at the reviews on Amazon and thought, everybody likes it. Okay. I'll try it out. Man, this stuff is the bomb. <laughs> I can see why it has so many good reviews. Um, it's a uh, Rovectin clean, the Lotus water cream. It is like a gel like consistency, very light. Um, and it really, it's very, see it's watery. Um, but it's just, I don't know. It's just fabulous. Like my, I've not, my skin my skin has been in such good condition in the, ever since I've used this and I've only been using this for like less than a year. You know, I think this is, this was the game changer right here. So I apply this, I let it dry. I don't use the, um, the fan, let it dry, absorb into my skin. And it doesn't take that long to absorb into my skin. And then I apply the daily sunscreen. Okay. So after I, um, let sets into my skin, then I go over it with a sun stick. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I am making sure that I, you know, <clears throat> I am not going to develop any more brown spots now because I have such oily skin. I don't have any wrinkles. I'm not bragging here. I just don't. When you have oily skin, you're not going to have any wrinkles. Um, you got dry skin. Sorry, you're going to have wrinkles, but I have friends who are the same age as me or even younger than me who have wrinkles. And, um, yeah, some of them, I know they have oily skin 
and I don't know, it, it's just, you know, it could be genetics because in my family, um, none of us have wrinkles. Like me and my sisters, I'm the oldest, my sister, um, my brother who is five years younger than me. Um, he does not look his age. He always gets that my, the, the sister after him, she definitely does not look her age. She probably looks, I mean, people always think that she's in her early thirties. And then our youngest sister who just turned 40, who's turning 41 actually this year. I mean, yeah, she always gets passed for like, you know, she could pass for still being in her twenties. We just, I think we get it from our dad because our dad, even when he was like in his sixties, he still looked like he was in his third, his thirties. I mean, he, or forties, he just, um, you know, we get, yeah, we got our skin jeans, I think from him. Um, so I'm trying to maintain, you know, what I have and, um, hopefully you just don't develop, you know, the wrinkles or any more aging spots. Um, now that I'm getting older. So I'm just trying to like, you know, give out information here to help everybody else, um, you know, maintain what they have, prevent what they could get. So, um, if you have any questions, definitely comment at the, um, you know, below. And like I said, I will link everything that I have here in the description. Um, I do have, um, I am affiliated with Amazon and, um, you know, that'll be in the link, but you can always just like, just copy and paste, you know, the names and then just, um, uh, just search it that way on Amazon. But, you know, if you purchased, um, through the affiliate affiliate link, that would help. <laughs> so anyways, um, sorry that this video was so long. I mean, I had a lot of products to go through, but, um, like I said, I hope it was helpful and I hope everybody has a great week and a great day. All right. Bye-bye.